With one in five new cars sold in the UK being electric, they're more popular than ever. But they still raise a lot of questions, like where do you charge, how costly are they to run, and are they actually greener? At which we want to dispel the myths, answer your questions, and help you on the ride of choosing the right type of car. This is Which 101. EVs are everywhere, but how do you know if they're right for you? To help us, I'm with which expert, Michael Passingham, who's going to let us know the realities of owning an electric car in 2025. So Michael, how did you get into the world of EVs? I mean, presumably this is something you dreamt of since you were a, a little boy. <laughs> well, I did have a stack of car magazines, the very humdrum type when I was sort of 12 years old or so. Aww. Now actually it's a great time because EVs are front and center of people's minds and they're actually really interesting. So what does the day-to-day -day look like of a car connoisseur? It's actually a really interesting job. We test between 80 and 100 cars here at Wix every year in the lab, but also out in the real world, which is great fun. And you know, day to day, I'm writing, I'm researching, I'm fact checking. I'm also exploring upcoming consumer harms, things that are wrong with the car industry and how we can make things better for people. So today, I'd love if you could tell me more about electric cars, you know, the costs and how to work out if it's the right choice of car for you. Sounds good. So let's start with the basics. If someone's thinking about buying an EV, what are the questions that they should be asking themselves? The first and biggest question is, can you charge at home? And actually, I can't, but we do have an EV charger down the road. So should we go look at it? Yeah, let's go. So if someone's thinking about getting an EV, but they live in the countryside, I mean, is this a big no? What are their options? If you live rurally, but you also are unable to charge at home for whatever reason, it is definitely something to consider because if, if you want to be able to charge quickly, you'd have to drive to a nearby service station and pay the fee for that, or drive to a slower street side charger in a nearby town. And then you'd be you know, waiting around for a few hours for your car to charge. So if you are in a circumstance where you live rurally but can't fit your own charger at home, yeah, you really should consider whether that's gonna meet your lifestyle needs or not. So it sounds like with EVs, it's less about the car and more about your driving habits and lifestyle. Exactly, yeah. So different EVs will offer you different things. The cheaper ones tend to have less range, so you are thinking more about what I've just talked about. But if you're going for something at the higher end, range is becoming less and less of a problem. We still aren't at the point where most EVs have the same range as an equivalent petrol and diesel car, but you're looking at ranges of 300 to 350 miles on the sort of mid-range to higher end, okay. which for many people should be enough. It might not feel like enough, but it should be enough for most people. So this is the charger. And how easy is it to use? Well, the first time I did it, I didn't know what I was doing and I got very confused, but <laughs> I think I'm pretty seasoned pro now. Yeah. Well, do you want to give us a demo? Let's do it. All right, so we've got to get our cable out first. Mm -hmm. One end for the car, one end for the charger. And now you're good to go. If someone's woken up on the wrong side of the bed this morning and they're deciding, oh, I'm going to ruin someone else's day and yank out their charger, I mean, what's to stop them from doing that? So most cars lock automatically when they're charging, but also this one has a button to press to lock it in place to make sure that no one can pull it out. And Very it's the handy. same at the other end as well. No one can pull it out. And in terms of cost, I mean, how much is it costing? And does it vary by location? Is it cheaper in the north and more expensive in the south? It does vary a little bit by location. The numbers vary depending on, you know, the time of year and what the price cap of energy is, but it is cheaper to charge in the north. And when you're charging at a charger like this, this one's actually a little bit above average. This one's 61p per kilowatt hour, where the average for a charger like this is about 51p. And okay. putting that into context, we tend to say if you take a medium sized car, for instance, a Vauxhall Astra petrol, and then you take the Vauxhall Astra electric, if you're paying more than 59p per kilowatt hour at a charger, you're probably paying slightly more to run the car per mile if you're using the charger, using the electric car. Got so it. it's really important to understand how much you're paying and how much you're likely to pay if you switch to an electric car. So we've talked a lot about the north and south difference in prices, but let's get London centric for a second. With an EV, am I exempt from congestion charge? Until the end of this year, yes. If you pay your £10 fee at the start of the year, all future journeys up until the end of this year are free. But yeah, that is ending because ultimately congestion charge is about traffic, not about so much about pollution. Obviously, we're in the ULEZ, the ultra low emission zone. This car and others like it, but also some petrol cars and diesel cars are also exempt. So, but yeah, for now, it's free to drive through central London. So currently £10 annual fee versus a £15 trip every time you go into London. Yeah, if you're doing that a bunch this year, fill your boots. So when it comes to budgeting for an electric car, what are some things that people tend to overlook? I think one thing that people often overlook is their tariff, their electricity tariff. You can get specific EV tariffs now that are about a quarter of the price 
to charge your car overnight than the standard rate, which is a huge saving. And it means that, you know, you have the car at home overnight anyway, you might as well charge it overnight and you'll save a huge amount of money. So you've got all of these costs to consider once you've actually bought your electric car, but why are they still so expensive to buy at the start? They're technologically advanced. They're loaded with batteries and electric motors, and that stuff is expensive to make ultimately. However, recently the government did introduce a new EV grant that can get you up to £3,750 off of a new EV if it oh, meets wow. certain criteria. Yeah, that's a, it's a big deal. And what's more, the cars that aren't eligible for that grant, those brands are doing their own discounts now. So there is a huge EV price war right now. So it sounds like a good time to buy an EV. It's getting to be a really good time to buy an EV. So in terms of everyday costs, are EVs cheaper to run than a normal car? So when it comes to your fuel costs, your electricity, if you're charging at home, yes, 100% is way, way cheaper. Mm -hmm. If you're charging out on the street, it does depend on the rate you're paying. And that is a, you know, a justified complaint. Not only am I paying more, I'm paying more for a more inconvenient way of charging. Mm -hmm. Currently, VAT is charged at 20% on charging cars out and about, which is the thing that really makes it, can make it more expensive than filling up a you know, petrol car. So yes, it's cheaper to run, but only if yeah, you're able to charge up. And also, I guess, presumably by where you live as well. If charging might cost more in the South, it's more expensive to run an EV down here. Yeah, there are figures that say that charging in the South can be 28%-ish more expensive. Wow. So that's something to consider as well. And ultimately, like with a petrol car as well, mm -hmm. it does depend on how efficient your car is. So when you're looking at an EV or looking at lots of EVs, what you're gonna buy, you need to look at not only the range, but actually the efficiency that really decides how much you're gonna pay to run that car. It's the same as miles per gallon. We measure it in miles per kilowatt hour, mm -hmm. and that then directly translates to how much you're going to pay to run that car. So, you know, our tests on the Witch website, they all show a miles per kilowatt hour based on a rigorous set of tests. So it's a great way to start to find out how much your car is going to cost to run. So we're back where we started. But one thing that we haven't talked about yet that weighs heavy on my mind is the environment. And is it true that EVs are genuinely better for the environment? All things considered, yes, there are pros and cons, but the main thing is you're charging a car from the electricity grid and the UK's energy mix is pretty clean, it's pretty renewable and it's fairly low carbon by international standards. Yeah. So that makes the UK a great place to own and charge an electric car environmentally. There are things to consider around battery technology and how the metals in those batteries are mined. Mm. That isn't great for the environment. You've got to be honest about that. But you also have to keep in mind that you mine metals for a battery once, whereas when you're extracting oil from the ground, you're doing it over and over again, refueling your car and burning things out your tailpipe. When you produce an EV, the initial carbon and pollution of the production is significant, but that's more than made up for over its lifespan when you're driving it around and charging it. Okay, and I've heard a lot about brake dust. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, that's a really interesting one. People will often say EVs are heavier, they use their brakes more, therefore there's dust everywhere and it's really bad for your lungs. It's true that brake dust isn't good for your lungs, but EVs, most of the time, aren't actually using their brakes. They're using regeneration, which is just using the motor to slow the car down to recharge the batteries. They don't actually use their brake discs all that much, so they don't produce as much brake dust into the air as you would have expected. There are studies that kind of show either way. There mm -hmm. is still research to be done, but generally, EVs don't release all that much brake dust in normal use. Got it. Right. Time for a Witch 101 classic, a little game of facts or fiction. Let's do it. Myth number one, public charging is always cheaper than petrol. That's fiction. In fact, oh. in many cases, it ends up being more expensive. And this is one of the big problems with charging your car mm -hmm. in the public network. We tend to compare, if you take sort of two similar medium-sized cars, like a Vauxhall Astra and the electric version, if you're paying more than 59p per kilowatt hour for charging your car publicly, that could end up being more expensive than if you'd filled up the petrol version of the Vauxhall Astra. Right. So it really pays to look at where you're charging and how much you're paying. Myth number two, EVs batteries lifespans don't last very long. That's also fiction. Oh. Um, in terms of longevity over the years, we are finding that in our survey that we put out to tens of thousands of owners, mm -hmm. we repeatedly get back people who've had their EVs for multiple years, five, seven years, they're not seeing any significant drop in battery wow. performance. Everyone's still well over, almost everyone's over 90% of their original range, which is great. And battery technology is only getting better. And I think the fears around batteries deteriorating over time kind of stem from how our smartphones do, mm -hmm. but these are different kinds of batteries and they don't degrade in the same way. Let's Let's get a bit seasonal. Is it true that EVs don't work as well in winter? Specifically around the range you'll get from a battery charge, yes, that is true. On very cold days, in very cold weather, 
EVs don't travel as far, you might lose up to 20% of the range you would get on a, on a warm day. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if you're charging an EV and the battery is cold, it will take much longer. Cars nowadays often have what's called battery preconditioning. They warm up the battery to mean it's more efficient okay. and also it will charge quicker, but some cheaper EVs don't have this technology. So it is worth bearing in mind when you see that range figure, take 20% off, think about what it would be like in winter as well. So we can deem that as fact. That is fact. Okay. Final myth of the day, are electric cars more expensive to insure than normal cars? That is a fact. Mm -hmm. um, EVs are trickier to repair, especially when they're involved in an accident. That is improving though, Yeah. but also, they're typically worth more, so therefore they take more to insure. And obviously there are loads of other factors in why cars are cheap or expensive to insure, but yeah, in general, that is true. And finally, we've learned so much today, but what are your three main takeaways? Think about how far you drive, where you're gonna charge and how much that will cost, and then also look at the new EV grants and see how much you can save. Michael, thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Electric cars have gone from being a futuristic idea to sleek and smart cars that are very much part of the now. But it's not one size fits all. From driving habits to charging access, the details matter. Still unsure if an electric car is right for you? Drop us your questions in the comments. This has been Witch 101, practical advice powered by testing. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to our channel and check out our next episode.